For a possible contradiction in the Bible, this person brought forth two verses, the first being Genesis 32.30 and the second being John 1.18. All right, let's see it. And the fit for today is the flash. The supposed contradiction unravels whenever you simply read the whole verse, especially whenever it comes to John 1.18. See, while it does say that no one has seen God at any time, the rest of it says, the only God who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. Who is this in reference to? This is in reference to the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ. So whenever we look at these two, what does it mean? It means that any time in the Bible, whenever somebody has seen God physically, who are they seeing? Are they seeing the Father or are they seeing the Son? Once again, John 1.18 answers this for us. Everybody in the Bible, OT and NT alike, whenever they saw God face to face, they were looking into the eyes of Jesus Christ. So John 1.18's identification of Jesus as the only God is almost certainly not original to the Gospel of John. But that's going to have to be an argument for another video. Here I want to point out how this content creator is flagrantly begging the question. And that is a fallacy where you construct an argument for a specific conclusion, but the argument only works if you already presuppose the conclusion is true. It's presupposing the conclusion in the premise of the argument. Because the proposal here is that this passage in Genesis disagrees with this passage in John. Genesis says, I have seen God face to face. John says, no one has ever seen God. And what this content creator is arguing is that John says, if anyone has seen God, they've actually seen Jesus. Therefore, the passage in Genesis is actually about seeing Jesus. However, that presupposes that the passage in Genesis is in agreement with the notion in the passage in John that if anyone sees God, they've actually seen Jesus. What if the author of the passage in Genesis didn't agree with John? Well, we're not going to deal with that because this content creator already presupposes the inspiration, the infallibility, the inerrancy, the univocality of the text. So their argument is literally that provided we already presuppose that these passages cannot disagree, then they agree. QED. Now, that's a flagrant fallacy, but that's okay for this content creator because this content is not intended for academic scrutiny or interrogation. It is not intended to construct an actual legitimate philosophically and logically sound argument. It is intended to perform that kind of argument and that kind of conviction and that kind of confidence for an audience that already agrees and just wants to feel justified in agreeing. So this is just performative argumentation that is profoundly fallacious, but because the goal is just to make other people who already agree feel good about agreeing, it doesn't really matter. But if you're actually concerned for logical or philosophical legitimacy, this argument flagrantly begs the question.